Hey, welcome back, guys. Before I dive deep into this video's theory, I just want to let you know that everything I mentioned in this video is under the Allegedly Act. Allegedly, meaning that it might be or it might not. So before you go into the comments, and I know you're down there right now, before you even watch the video, I can see you. I see you typing right now into the comments saying that he's reaching, he don't know what he's talking about, all of these fun things that y'all like to put. Yes, I am reaching. Now, I don't agree with I don't know what I'm talking about because I kind of know what I'm talking about, but I'm definitely reaching. But we're about to reach in the name of investigation in the spirit of Shannon Burke, God rest her little overdetermined soul. So in today's video, we're going to make the case that Ronnie Mathis could potentially be the mysterious Breeze, a character up to this point that we have heard about, yet we've never seen, making his presence just as enigmatic as his name itself. Before we begin, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and bell notification to immediately receive these videos. Also, big thank you to all of my channel donors. If you'd like to be the next one, drop a dollar on that cash app for us. And lastly, a spoiler alert is now in effect for all things power. Here we go. What happened to the game I love? That seems to be the manifesto of Ronnie Mathis as he makes his physical return to the street game. One that came with no welcoming wagon or parade in Jamaica, Queens. One that came just as silently as his moods are whenever he's on screen. All we know of Ronnie at this point is that he's Nick's older brother and that in a former capacity, he ran the drug game of Jamaica, Queens and the corners therein. Corners that have since been ran down on and divvied out in small doses to Rock and other underbosses throughout the last few seasons. Ronnie is now a man that has returned to a game that he no longer recognizes nor agrees with, and his return is the first clue to him being someone more than meets the eye. Whenever Breeze is presented to us, I doubt it will be on the nose as a direct character introduction, especially with the avalanche effect that his name brings whenever he's mentioned. I can see Raising Cannon introducing his character in a subtle way, under the guise of someone else, a misdirection if you will. This is what has led to the heavy speculation throughout Raising Canaan's existence from character to character. Fans impatiently awaiting the arrival of Power's most known unknown, the clandestine character, named for the Prince and Power of the Air, or at least that's how it seems. The Prince and Power of the Air being the devil himself, which is a category that I'm sure we'll see Ronnie uphold as things roll along, as Ronnie seems very cold and detached in a sociopathic way, even from his own brother. When he's first introduced, he doesn't even greet his brother, who he hasn't seen in three years, mind you, with a hug, any well wishes, a Hallmark card, nothing. Ronnie is ready to get to business. Ronnie is about that action. And moreover, Ronnie's ready to reclaim what's his, or at least what he left to his brother. In addition to his callous disposition towards his brother, we notice Ronnie doing something else when we first see him. He's watching television. And not just any television, but a comedy show of sorts an unnamed variety show made solely for the purposes of entertainment. The type of show that's like a sitcom that comes on daily at the same time over and over throughout the weekday. Now stay with me. When Kanan described Breeze to Tariq way back in OG Power Season 3, Episode 308 to be precise, he described him by saying, quote, Breeze was strong, but he wasn't that smart. Had the same routine every day. We always know where that month was at, you know? And then he said, your pops knew that Breeze would be here at 7 o'clock to watch Jeopardy. Nigga loved Alex Trebek. So Ghost came up after school, we broke in, and we waited for him to come home and watch TV. Now, I know what you think. You're sitting back, like I said before. Magic, you're reaching. It, 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 just because he had the TV on, just because he watching something, that doesn't mean that he... Yes, that is a powerful parallel that's moving underneath the surface because it's the first clue to Ronnie liking things in a routine fashion just like he likes the streets. Unique explained to Ronnie that business changed. Sometimes you gotta change with the shit. Ronnie was as disappointed in his brother as he was angry because the streets didn't represent anything of what he remembered back when he was in power. Again, another clue to him liking things in a routine, monotonous type of fashion. Ronnie is averse to change and that aversion to change could have been something that potentially got him bested by his future understudy ghost, allegedly anyway. One's refusal to change in the streets is also indicative of their street IQ because they only know what they accept as knowledge and they push out anything that's going to force growth or change. Again, these are clues to the mundane, to the normal, to the routine, to things that are easy to follow by someone who's watching closely. And Ronnie is, if nothing else, observant. 
At least that's who he's been presented to be. But by being incarcerated for the last three years, he's used to doing things what? In a routine, normal, mundane sort of fashion. So those tendencies followed him when he left prison. And what I think we're going to see is him trying to strong arm his way back into the game, back into the way things used to be. And he may just be successful in doing that, but it ultimately will lead to his downfall, allegedly. And as I end this, I just want to lend credence to his leadership skills, which although we haven't seen, we've heard much about. As Unique pointed out that Ronnie ran the streets on par with DEF CON at one time, and the two divvied up territory amongst themselves. But in the final summation, Ronnie's approach is myopic, it's one-sided, and frankly, it's outdated. Will we see a Ronnie that will accept change and growth in the process, or will we see him cling on to the normalcy of yesterday? And by doing so, perhaps even witnessing his future undoing, as was narrated by an older Kanan to his new young understudy, at the time anyway, Tariq St. Patrick. But what do you make of all of this? Is Ronnie Mathis Breeze hiding in plain sight? Or is Breeze one of those other nine characters potentially who were freed according to that news report due to police malfeasance? Be sure to drop me your opinions in the comments below. As always, I thank you for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, go ahead and drop a dollar on that cash app for us, hit the like button, share with your friends who are power fans, and subscribe for more content such as this. This is Rudy P. Magic of Rudy P. Magic Beats, and have a blessed one until the next one. Peace, y'all.